Hey guys, welcome back. Let's play Final Fantasy VI. Last time we explored the entire world, pretty much, with our brand new airship. I think we've been to pretty much every little island or part of the continents that we can pretty much go to right now. And then in between episodes, I did a little bit of work uh, fighting the Intangiers, and I also went back to the Velt for Gaw. And I got some more uh, rages for him, so he's pretty much all good to go. I think the only one I was missing... Was I missing? I was missing one that I was looking forward to getting. I, I got the Intangier. What else did I get? I finally got Aspect, now that I don't really care for it anymore. It's still one of the most powerful single-targeting attacks we have right now, but I don't need it anymore. But at least I got it. Always seems to get it after I don't need it anymore. Uh, so yeah, the only one I'm missing is uh, Magnitude 8 with the uh, Hades Gigas, I guess. Out of all the ones that I was looking forward to get, that's the only one I believe I'm still missing. Not that that really matters all that much. As you can see, I have a brand new party, and this contains my highest leveled characters, so let's go on in to the Imperial base. The Espers wouldn't give us the time of day without Terra. You're not allowed to go without Terra. And by that same logic, if you bring Terra by herself, I can do it. Why do I see, feel so wretched? No, I can do this, but still, I don't really want to go there all alone. Now, whenever you can't take her by herself either, you're forced to bring at least two party members. Um, if you ever want to, you can always just choose a part, like a group of party members that's not full, though the vast majority of the time, there's no reason to. Anyway, the characters that I am going to uh, choose to use right around now are specifically ones that have been underleveled or underutilized up until now. As you can see, level 21, level 20, level 24, and level 22. Gaw has made a huge difference up until now. He's still good, but he's starting to balance out a little more with some of the other characters. Mog is an interesting choice here. Uh, from what I've read, he's actually really good to bring here. And what people, or what a couple of the guides have been recommending is to use his Water Rondo Dance upcoming, which gives him the ability to do an all healing ability, a single targeting lightning attack, a, oh geez, Spectre was, Spectre was a confuse inducing attack. And finally you get another one. It's called Wild Bear. And for some reason, all it does is heals pretty much all status effects, which in itself could be useful upcoming because upcoming we're going to deal with a, a number of status effects for the first time. But I don't really recommend it. Edgar is another good choice to, to bring here if you want to bring him. Uh, and Gaw you could bring here. He can do just as well. But I think it's... It's no longer a huge important point to bring Gaw, so I'm not going to. Edgar's good throughout the entire game. Molly is much better in the second half of the game. And, uh, well, there's nothing super valuable we need to steal, so we can let Locke sit, sit this one out. I do want to show off Setzer since I haven't really done a lot of it, and I've ignored Cyan for most of the game, so we're going to bring him. Terra is required. And, well, Sabin's underleveled. Sabin might be the best character in the game, but uh, not quite yet. Anyway, let us lift off. And then we can land. For some reason, every time you get up off the, uh, the area, the ship moves just a little bit and it displaces where you are. So you always have to move when you go to land again, which is kind of annoying, I guess, but oh well. Anyway. Now that we've brought a party that contains Terra and some backup, no soldiers. You remember when we were here before, there were soldiers everywhere and we couldn't get through. And I specifically showed that someone was blocking these uh, stairs here because that's the only way we can get out of here. The uh, door to the room in the house is still locked. Now this gets us over here. Cave to the sealed gate. 
This is a pretty big difficulty spike in the game. And you'll notice by the music, it's not a normal dungeon. Now, sprint shoes will be recommended throughout the vast majority of this area. However, this dungeon has some interesting aspects to it. And in the first area, we're not so much worried about damage as we are worried about not dying. And we can die pretty easily. So we want everyone protected against muddle. And wall rings aren't required, but they're nice. And I will demonstrate why that is momentarily. We have an assassin dagger here. I believe that one has a 25% chance. You can't equip it, of course not. It might be shadow only. Where is it? Why don't you just go to the bottom of my inventory? Where'd it go? There it is. Yeah, randomly dispatches an enemy. It's a 25% chance of happening. Again, this is better in the Game Boy Advance version where Evade actually does something. A little bit of speed, a little bit of magic power. Lock can equip it as well. It's not a bad dagger. Now, interestingly enough, the first three rooms of this dungeon can all give you specific enemies that you can't encounter anywhere else in the entire area. That is not the case here. These guys you'll encounter throughout the entirety of this dungeon. Ing, these are probably the most common and one of the more dangerous enemies. And we need to kill you yesterday. Now, the, uh, the Ing enemies, you can steal amulets from them if you so desire. This is gonna miss them because I'm pretty sure they're flying. We have learned a new ability yeah, with uh, Cyan here. Once he hit, I believe it was level 15. And that's his level four uh, tech, which is Quadra Slam. Four attacks at 50% battle power. All right, let's see if we can get... No. That one which will be far more valuable. The interesting thing about the Ing enemies is, well, they're weak to water and pearl. Notice, uh, uh, you'll notice a trend as we go through this area. Look at the vast amount of experience we're gaining, by the way. Pretty much any enemy in this area is going to be weak to pearl and they're probably going to absorb poison. So don't use poison and use pearl. The only thing we have to do pearl with is Aura Bolt or Kaiser Knuckles, which you could use with a Genji Glove on uh, Savin, but Aura Bolt is just easier, requires you buying less things, and you're going to give him a earring, pair of earrings anyway, so might as well. Um, but yeah, these guys, uh, they absorb poison and fire, and they have an interesting attack that we'll see a little bit later. I'll talk about it more when we uh, get there. Savin gained a level. We're going to get a lot of levels down here. This is probably the biggest reason why I'm not bringing Mog, even though a lot of guides have recommended it. He's just already far over leveled as is. All right, uh, let's remove Zone Seek from you. And one thing I forgot to do last time is go over the espers that we actually have. So let's give uh, some espers to Cyan here. Bismarck gives us two to strength and We'll give you, or was, was Tara going to level up too? I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, Tara's going to level up too. So we're going to give her Zone Seek, which gives us magic power plus two. All right, now is probably a good as time as any to go over these. We've already gone over the first four. Ifrit, Fire Elemental, has Fire, Fire 2, and Drain. I've already talked about how much I distaste Drain, because even though Terra learns it by default, no one else can learn it at a rate any better than times one, and it's not a decent spell worthy of that. It should really be like times three, at least. Shiva comes with some interesting spells like Rasp and Osmos, but as you can see from Zone Seek down here, Rasp and Osmos are much higher learn rates here, so we basically don't need to use Shiva at all. 
Uh, we've already learned Cure, and we can already learn Ice at other places. Ice 2, we can learn from Terra's father, Maduin. Has a times 3 learning rate on all of them. It's more useful uh, in terms of the amount of eight magic points you're going to have to gain to learn them all this way, even though Shiva has a times 5 rate on Ice 2. Because if you go to Ramu, it's got a two times rate for Bolt 2. So for the most part, you're just going to equip Maduin. Uh, Maduin is a non-elemental attack. Uh, I think it's like fire, ice, and lightning. Uh, I think it technically counts as non-elemental if you cast it. Um, I don't cast a lot of espers in this game. Obviously, Shiva and Ifrit do fire elemental and ice elemental, uh, respectively. Unicorn casts Remedy, or removes all status effects, or negative status effects. And you can learn some basic spells here, cure status ailments. Uh, Dispel would be nice. I'll be uh, working on this eventually. Uh, Safe and Shell we can learn much faster uh, from some other ones uh, later on down. Shout petrifies all enemies. So this can be useful, like uh, a Siren with Mute. So we have a couple different uh, status effects we can make use of. Carbuncle does exactly what Carbuncle always does, cast Reflect on the party. You can also teach Reflect, as well as Haste. And we do have the Warp spell. It uh, instantly runs away from battles, and it warps you out of the dungeon, just like the Warp Stone that we found earlier on in the game. Phantom, as I've talked about, it makes the party invisible, inflicts the clear status. It's one of the best statuses in pretty much the entire game. Uh, it's really, really broken. I'm going to try not to abuse it, but I will point out good points where it is very, very useful. Uh, here we have access to Berserk, which is going to be helpful. I am going to want to learn Berserk and Vanish at some point. Demi does, which it's not a quarter in this game. Sometimes it's quarter. In this game, it's half. Uh, it's, you know, reduces HP by a percentage. It's decent. Uh, so yeah, uh, Water Elemental for Bismarck here. I can't remember if there's any type of reference uh, in terms of the name. But it's a water elemental attack. I guess it takes Leviathan's place in this game. Uh, we learned the basic elemental spells and the life spell here. The thing with this is because of its plus two strength at level up, this is the Viger stat for some reason, they translated it differently in different spots of the menu. But uh, this is going to be used on all of our physical attackers like uh, Cyan and Locke, etc. So it makes a lot of sense that they're going to eventually learn all these spells. Incidentally, we'd rather them not have them, but the plus two strength is just so worth it. Uh, Golem, uh, this works the way it did in Final Fantasy V. Uh, the stamina doesn't really matter. Uh, Safe and Stop and Cure 2 are all pretty fast learning here, uh, so I would recommend using this one if you want to learn some of those spells. Um, if I remember correctly, Golem protects you a total of the amount of HP of the caster, like the max HP of the caster. It'll protect you from that much damage on all party members before it disappears. So it's all right. It basically doubles your HP in a sense, at least compared to, you know, against physical attacks. It does nothing against magic spells. Zone C casts Shell on the party, which is nice. It gives us access to Shell for everyone, though. It's not something I use a lot in this game. And yeah, it's the only uh, Esper we have right now with plus two to magic. So everyone's going to want access to that when they level up. And Seraphim, or Seraphim, recovers HP. This is uh, regen on all party members. Again, we have er really easy uh, access to Cure, uh, regen, even Remedy more so than Unicorn, and all the different uh, spells there. No level up bonus, but still very nice to have. Anyway, with that being said, you saw which uh, spells I had already learned with Terra, which was a lot of them. Um, Terra is going to make good use of them. This really didn't take me all that long. I was uh, fighting the Intangir and learning a lot of things. She's going to be working on Stray and then probably Phantom before looking at a few other things. Maybe get some of those or something like that. Not, uh, well, I guess I would, wouldn't want to do that there. I'd want to do that on Strayfim, but either way, it's nice having access to all of those. Anyway, down here, we get the second Tempest Knight. Knife, not Knight. 
Uh, we will be using that in a moment, but first, I would like to fight one battle of a unique enemy around here. Okay, here's one of them. Uh, these guys. Let's uh, start off with Orbolt there. That's not what I was going for, but that's fine. Chocobop. Uh, so Aphorites are weak to ice and pearl. They absorb poison and fire. They have a 33% chance to counter with Imp, which you probably don't want to deal with at the moment. Weak to ice. Yeah, so there's the Imp song there. So that's the uh, counter attack. Yeah, we, we kind of don't want to deal with that. That's the uh, ice sword that Terra's equipped with there. And finally, the most dangerous enemy in this area, the Lich, only encounterable in the first couple of rooms. Now, the Lich are interesting. If you leave them alone, they will eventually cast Fire 1, Fire 2, Fire 3, and they usually start off the battle with Mad Touch, which inflicts confusion. This battle can absolutely suck if you're not prepared for it. Uh, we're going to give him a chance to cast something here. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to hit you guys with Ice 2, since I have access to it, and finish off one of them. And I want to give the, uh, the Witch a chance here, just because, yeah, Fire, Fire 2, and even Fire 3. He's really, really powerful. And he can do a lot of damage, and these guys are absorb fire, so of course that's going to happen. Let's try and get rid of that one. Are you going to show me fire three? He does have an attack that bypasses our reflect uh, from our wall rings, but like I said, he inflicts confusion at the start of battle, can use fire three, it does quite a bit of damage. Uh, you do not want to get hit with that right now. It's going to do a lot more than that to you. It's probably going to one-shot most of your characters. So be very, very careful. Um, let's just attack it and finish it off that way. Yeah, the Liches are... Uh, let's see. They're only weak to Pearl. They absorb poison and fire. Uh, so be very, very careful around them. And with that being said, I think that's all of them for that room. It, it's interesting. There's This dungeon contains one giant room that only has two enemies in it. The rest of the area contains... Like, the rest of the area contains uh, three different rooms, and those are the only rooms you can find certain enemies in, so I would like to show them off. The one that we haven't run into yet uh, is available in the next room, so we are going to move on. Uh, I want to... No. I want to... No! Stop that! No! Do the thing! <laughs> Everything's going wrong! Yeah, watch your levels like a hawk in here after pretty much every battle. Alright, the liches are only encounterable in the first two rooms, so now we can uh, make better use of our damage, and we can just cut out all the the junk here and so we can put we don't need uh, peace rings anymore because the liches are the only ones that can do confuse and we don't need wall rings because they're the only ones who can do other you know uh, fire three which can kill us everything else not particularly dangerous hero ring we want on uh, uh, cyan there as well as a black belt to or not a black belt a genji glove now that we have the second tempest knife Give you that, give you the power sash. So that's pretty much how I want you set up. That's why you're currently in the front row. Here we're going to give out earrings to everybody else because, oh, why else would we want anything else? And that's pretty much my setup at this point. There we go. Now, here, you'll notice the, if you wait long enough, that everything's going to disappear on us. Now, if you hold the button over, uh, right as things are switching, or even before, then you'll bypass the need to uh, worry about uh, any of the uh, 
like falling off, but if you don't, you will fall. Wait. Uh, yeah, see, I, I forgot which <laughs> side I was supposed to go to. All right, so we want to go there, and we want to go down. And we want to go over here. Get that, containing coin toss, which is a new accessory that I'll go over in a minute. Uh, I forgot which one was which. Okay. Now, here... Let's run into and show off these guys. Perfect. Uh, these guys aren't particularly dangerous. These are vaguely interesting. Well, when you get seven at the start, you know you're screwed. All right, these guys are weak to ice, absorb fire, they can pass sleep, and that's pretty much it. So let's get our Ice 2 spell out here, one shot one of these guys, and Cyan can now show off why Tempest Knives are good if this video game will ever let me get the Wind Slash effect to work. Finally! So yeah, that's going to hit all enemies. Uh, Hero Ring is good because it ups magic power, which does influence the amount of damage you can deal with it because his natural magic stat's not very good. But uh, anyway, um, how do I do this spot here? Yeah, so hold over to the right. Sometimes right at the end, it'll drop you on that particular one. I don't know why, but it seems to do that more often than not. All right, so we don't need to worry about anything else yet. Uh, one other note that I didn't go over is in terms of our levels, uh, when the game re-averages your levels, they're going to put everyone with the same amount of experience to the next level. And in order to offset everyone's levels, in order to uh, properly give them Esper bonuses, I would put a couple of them in the fight uh, with other party members and level them up a couple of times so that I would always have people kind of offset and staggered in terms of levels. That's why everyone's, you know, separated a little bit at least to make it easier to uh, properly equip things. And I need to pull up a map because this area is... It's not super confusing, but it's not easy either. All right. So I know where I'm going. I need to go to the right. There we go. Now we've passed off pretty much all of the difficult enemies. Here come the easy ones. Zombone. Pretty sure I can hit them with Chocobob. Yeah, so now you start to see the uh, benefit of Tempest Knives. They can do a decent amount of damage for free. The, uh, the Zombone is weak to Fire and Pearl. The only enemy in here to be actually weak to Fire. Pearl will do the job, though. Definitely. Uh, Sabin's really, really good in this area because he naturally has that, even if you haven't bought the uh, Kaiser Knuckles anywhere and given him a Genji Glove. Uh, what else we got here? Um, let's see. Yeah, they can cast Zombie on you, but they usually don't until much later in the fight, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Uh, here we get an Aether, and I did want to go over this. The Coin Toss changes slots into GP Rain, or Money Toss. Gil Toss, whatever it is in different translations. It's not so good. Uh, it can't be boosted uh, like slots can with earrings. Uh, the only thing involved in the damage calculation for coin toss is your level. Uh, and I'm going to be relatively low leveled for most of the game, so it's rarely good to use. Plus, it, you throw money all the time. And while we have lots of money right now, we're going to need it. By the end of the game, we are going to need all the money we have and a lot more. All right, uh, one other thing I will show off here. Um, we haven't learned too many spells for Setzer. Um, just to give you a quick idea of what I've learned for him. A few basic things give him access to Osmos. Rasp is pretty much, and Osmos are pretty much good to teach to anyone um, just because they're useful. 
Uh, I also taught him Doom and Break and Cure 2, as well as uh, Stop and Shell, just and safe so that he has a few basic things that he can do, but mostly he's going to be relying on his own stuff. All right, go for the attack here. If these guys get around to it, I would like to show one of the other things they can do. I guess that's probably going to kill them. We'll have to show it off in a different fight. All right, I've left him alone. Maybe he will do the thing that he's supposed to do. He didn't use it. Anyway, let's go over here. Let's see, there's a treasure chest there. Okay, enough of that battle. Now here is kind of like a little bypass for that. The encounter rate in here is pretty high at times. Okay, here we go. This is the move that I was trying to talk about. Life Shaver. Now, the way that Life Shaver works is it's kind... Nice. Dual Tempests. Gotta love them. All right, so Life Shaver is an attack that the Ingai can do. And what it does is it's like uh, the Minus Strike from Final Fantasy IX, which means it does damage equal to your total HP minus your current HP. So if you don't one-shot them, they're going to do a lot of damage. The interesting... Wow, lots of levels on that one. Okay, the interesting thing about Life Shaver is, well, it's Earth-based, meaning if you have Gaia gear, you're not going to take any damage from it. The only character we currently have in our party that can't equip Gaia gear is Cyan. He is a bit of a liability here because of that, but I think this is the first time where he's actually decent enough because of his dual Tempest Knives, uh, or Tempest Swords, or whatever you want to call them, that he's worthwhile bringing here. But uh, if you're kind of afraid and you don't want to, uh, you know, be too dangerous like that, then you might, uh, you might want to take a different route, but that's entirely up to you. All right, we're going to go up here and we're going to hit this switch. Now, this is an interesting thing because that's going to allow us to get something and the bridge will be fixed once we run into a battle. Opens up this. Okay, we're back. Here we get another Genji Glove. Don't feel uh, bad about having to heal a lot. Oh, I thought that uh, thing disappeared after a battle. I guess I was wrong. Jeez, there's a lot of battles in here. All right, there are three switches. The first one causes this to happen. This is the only time you'll fight the ninja in here, and it's always a back attack from what I recall. Now, interestingly enough, almost every enemy in here is undead. So if you want to refill some of uh, some of Terra's MP, this is your opportunity to do so. Use Osmos. This guy is weak to Bolt and Pearl, absorbs poison. He'll cast the clear status on himself. As well as, oops, uh, do lots of other things. Ouch, um, kill him now, please. Uh, so yeah, we've uh, filled up. He's going to cast Invisible. We're going to cast Cure 2, so we're not dead. We're going to cast a Magic-based attack, which will automatically hit him, and yeah, he's dead. Um, he just likes to uh, throw edges and uh, throw weapons at you. He does a lot of damage. He's kind of scary, to be quite honest. Nuts. Thought I had the Monopoly on the stuff buried in the plaza beneath the Grand Stairway. Um, Wolsey? The plaza and the grand stairway. What in the hell are you talking about? If you look over the other translations, buried in the ground beneath the big stairway. It's a lot, it's a lot less colorful. And normally I'm all for colorful, uh, especially when it comes to SNES translations. But this makes no sense in the SNES version, really. But yeah, he uh, disappears. I need to heal before I go any further. Um, blow through all your tonics in this area because you don't need them anymore. They don't heal very much. And now we just have potions left, which is fine. Anyway, let's get that one. Open up this. And we've reached the save point. 
and they're nice enough to give us a tent. So if you didn't use Osmos, you at least have a tent to uh, heal up. Anyway, that's pretty much all the time we have for today. Next time, we will continue through the rest of this area and hopefully not quite, not fight quite so many battles and hopefully manage to get to the end where the gate to the, uh, the other world of resides. That's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.